Oh, the biggest game of the weekend at Wembley yesterday. Yeah. The Lionesses made history yesterday. Yeah. What, 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 did, what did you make the of it? Do you want to start there? The whole journey has been unbelievable. Yes. Listening, listening to the girls speaking and even Alex Scott after the game, what she said, I found really interesting. I, you know, she, she was, was she was choked up. She was choked yeah, up emotional. and she was saying, no longer have I got to get up and speak at corporate events and persuade people to try and support women's mm. football mm. and push. Mm. Now I haven't got to say it. Lots of people said no along the way and now they've missed the train. They should have got on the train when they had a chance. But the train's oh, left. Oh no! The, don't worry about that, mate. The train's got another stop. Don't worry. They, and, they don't worry. They, there's going to be. A, they, they'll be putting a few more carriages on this train because hopefully this train will get bigger and yeah. be just on, on the back of it. Could just say how brilliant Leanne Anderson and Faker others were as well. They and, have. and our and yeah. our team of you know our army really that went to all of these games. Adrian Durham delivered absolutely everything. Joe brilliant. Shannon, Sam Matter, uh, Ada as well. Yes. Yeah, so we're very very lucky here that we have a, a magnificent team that brought you every single game and ended up with history being made. Uh, at Wembley yesterday, but this on top of that, go what on, she said. Go on, go on, on top of that, you, th you you start reading that, you know, they stopped women playing football. Yeah, that's uh, in nineteen twenty. Like, yeah. like why? It's, it's, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. And then they and then they started yeah. playing again in nineteen seventy one. They yeah. showed the game on the TV. That's right. And I've been involved in the women's football. I've been co helping coach Northwich Vixens team, the development team, and everything. So. I've watched, like, every time we turned up for training on a Wednesday night, they, they, there's, like, six girls' teams playing. Mm -hmm. And right, they struggle. Right. They all struggle to get the pitch. They all struggle to get a training session. They struggle to raise the money to get training sessions on. But boys do as well. Boys' teams do. But I just think now, at school, instead of it being, uh, right, on, on um, you take the curriculum of, like, we're going to play netball mm -hmm. or we're going to play rounders. Yeah. They've got an option now. Absolutely. Girls are going to have an option at school to play football from I totally when agree. they're tiny. Totally and, agree. and now it should carry on. And the pool of players they've got to pick from in the future is going to get bigger and bigger and there bigger. There is no doubt whatsoever that, that after what happened over the last three weeks, culminating with yesterday's historic victory, um, that, they, that, they, that the sport itself is going to grow and yeah. grow and grow and grow. I'd love to know what you think of the, what we saw yesterday and, and the legacy that we hope it, it not only just leaves but moves on as well. What, what do you make of this? Lots has been made about people saying how refreshing it is that it's a different kind of atmosphere at those grounds. I was listening to Drive on the Way In. Benty and Goldstein were saying it's, 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 there's a pureness, a, a, a purity about the game at that, at, at, at that international level but for the women. And that's fine. There was absolutely a place because you saw that. You know, it's more family orientated. There's more younger children. And let's be honest, Dino, you, know, you and I have been around foot, professional football for most of our lives. There is there is a, a dark side to professional football on the terraces, the fans. Mm. There is. I have to say that I think there's a place for both. I don't think you can you can say one is better than the other. If you like that, some people like both and go to both. But I have mm. to say, I do love that tribalism, that 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 atmosphere that, the, especially when there's a big game. Rugby's different. Rugby's, of course, different rugby. atmosphere you, you when you go compare. to the rugby. They're two totally you different. Can't, I don't think you can compare. No, and of course, people talk about the referees and how they call the referees sir in rugby and how, how the referees are, you know, disrespected, I think, is, is, is a very good phrase to use. But don't, don't, don't separate the two. You can have both, and they can both live happily side by side. But what do you think? Personally, I, I love that, that atmosphere that you go in and you know there is something special about to happen. And, the, and the, yes, at times the vitriol between two sets of fans, I love it. I just love when I played and love when I go to Stamford Bridge and uh, Liverpool rock up, Man United, the big games. You know the big ones where you know something, something big is about to happen. Oh, three, well, seven, Leeds, one, Chelsea, for example. They, they, see, that's that, that goes back right, years. That, well, Liverpool mentions that, that. But you do know what, Dino? You can still have both. Yeah, yeah. What Definitely. do you think? 03717, double two, double three, double four. We're going to talk about that. The Community Shield, what do you make of that at the weekend? Manchester City, in the end, I think Liverpool deserved to win. Look good. Look really, really. In fact, both. I thought it was a good game, entertaining game. 03717, double two, double three, double four. But we're going to kick off uh, with Steve O, who's dialed that number. First caller of the week, a Newcastle fan. Steve O, good evening and welcome. Hi, Steve O. Good evening, Dean. Good evening, Jason. How are you? How was your weekend, Steve? Are you looking? Um, it, was, it was extremely busy. But first of all, I'd like to say um, massive. You know, the the England women, absolutely brilliant, and especially to Steph Houghton because she lives. She's from a village called Hetton. Right. The same the same village where Bob Paisley was from, which is about four miles from where I live. So hats uh -huh. off to. Uh, 
She Definitely. missed out with an Achilles injury, she didn't did. she? She did. She, she gave did. her a chance, I think, to prove her fitness, and she just didn't yeah, make it. She did. So um, she'll yeah, be yeah. she'll be pleased she, and gutted at the same time. Oh yes, much. No, but yeah. it's been a, she's had a fantastic, fantastic uh, player though. Indeed. But, uh, Indeed. Yeah, yeah. Just there, uh, I thought about was was actually uh, Watford, and I'm I'm actually a Newcastle fan, and, and Watford absolutely dominated us last year. How we got a one-one draw was incredible. Um, so they're front three, front three, mm. should I say? Yeah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Sarah, Dennis and Pedro. Oh. Uh, I mean, Dennis lit up the Premier League a few times last year, as did Sarah yeah. last time they were in the Premier League. Um, do you reckon clubs mm. will be looking at them, Stan? I mean, you, at Newcastle. I mean, if if you found well, out we, the new going, yeah, sorry, sorry, uh, just, we we definitely need a striker because we have we have Dean, um, we have, we have Callum Wilson, yeah, but uh, we need extras. Definitely. If you found out that you were interested, or the, or the because the the window is very much open, I think what you done tonight, Dennis, in particular, I felt there'll mm. be clubs looking at that and just seeing how he starts. I know that would that Watford fans would hate to hear the, hear to hear this conversation, oh, but yeah. while the window oh, is yeah. open right now, it's, it's fair game. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, when he when he talks, probably probably especially at Watford because that's the sort of club they are. But, I mean, uh, the guy in charge, but they're front front three. Yep. Amazing! It literally tore us apart. We we got a one-one draw, but how we did that, oh, uh, God knows. I've got but, I've got uh, his stats in front of me. I mean, Dennis last season, he got ten goals in thirty-three games, league games for Watford, and they got, mm. and they got relegated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's he's got a goal in him, pace, definitely pace, and scores. He's quick yeah. and he scores. And, and 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 that Brazilian guy, he he scored the the equaliser ones each. He you know he brilliant in the air as well. Yeah, indeed, indeed. How much are you looking forward to Newcastle uh, this season, Steve-O? Very much so. I've, 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 I've had a, I'm going to have a little punt on us finishing sixth okay. and winning winning our first domestic cup since 1955. Well, do you know what? That, that, what an unbelievable season that'll be for Newcastle if that happens.